I've hit record. What does this mean, Matt? I don't know. I've got my eyes closed. I've no idea what it means. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Welcome, everybody. You've seen the title. You know what the video is. I, I don't yet. Just for a laugh. Um, okay. While we're gathering these early commentaries together, yeah. I, I thought, you know, oh, I know which one I'll pick. And I didn't tell Matt. Because uh, it's an extended cut of Fellowship of the Ring. Oh, <laughs> I didn't bring snacks. I hope you brought a memory card change. <laughs> no. no well, this change bullet into that fact. Where, 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 where? That is true, but we don't need that for this. So everybody, please line up your copy of You Know What and hit play in three, a two, a one. Now I selected this one. Hey! <laughs> I selected this one because, uh, well, let's see if you can predict which series we're in from the theme music. Uh, five or six. Ooh. Why is that? What what brought you to that conclusion? Uh, the Starbug. Yeah. Um. Green Suit River, Hattie Hayridge. Yeah. Uh. Oh, you jumped the gun just ever so slightly. <laughs> we're in four, son. Okay. And we're in, if I remember correctly, your favourite episode. <laughs> Is this my favourite episode? According to Big Damn Cast episode 6 or whatever it was, this was your favourite when you really thought about it. <laughs> oh, have you had to change your heart since I don't then? know, I just to don't remember fair, what I said. It's been three years since we recorded that yeah. episode. Boys from the Dwarf. Um, but this one, I recall at the time when you told me, this was your favourite, I was like, I don't mind, I'm, in, I'm, in for, I, I, I'm into it. I'm into it. I, I remember thinking, really? Like, You know, we've got... Gunmen and, and back to reality and stuff. Is it not Gunmen? Are you sure it wasn't Gunmen? It was not Gunmen, sir. It was Meltdown because I was surprised as sin. This is a twist. Um, but I, I think it's... Been, well, let's see if we can rekindle some of that love. Okay. okay slash okay. reveal that actually, no, you were lying to the listeners in oh, 2016. God, just, it's just enough to just bask in... <laughs> in, a, in Charles and Barry bouncing off each other. They're so good. Do they hate each other at this point or were they over that? Um, they probably still hate each other. <laughs> I don't know, they seem quite pally now when you see them doing stuff together. It's all for the cameras. It's all for the cameras, lovey. It's all for the camera. <laughs> this dialogue must have been a bitch to learn. <laughs> it's all those numbers. <laughs> he's quite possible. Oh, actually, based on Chris Barry's eyeline there, he's quite possibly looking at a prompt card just up there. Oh, yeah, okay, help. okay. Have you ever seen a sitcom taping? Uh, yes, I saw I've, I've seen, seen a few, but uh, three of them were like pilots for part of a pilot season. Mm. So I cannot, can't recall the name of them for the life of me, and they never aired. No. Oh. Um, but I did see Ben Elton's The Right Stuff, or The Right Way, uh, which was not very <laughs> funny, but it was a really funny, it was a really funny, like, experience. Yeah. But the episode was not Wait, Ben Elton, not very funny. What? Now, come now. Come now. Come, 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 come. He has his moments. And he's not a turf, so... Not everyone's comedy heroes from the 80s and 90s are dead to them yet. Oh, God. He also wrote Blackadder, so I'll always give him credit for that. Yeah, I mean, that, that holds up, to be fair. Um, but, yeah, well, why do you ask? Is it to do with the staging and everything? Yeah, just I was just, I was just curious. It's always... It, a traditional sitcom, also like this, is very much played towards the audience. Because I've, I've only ever seen one. <laughs> oh. Oh wow. They were all quite good at sitting still, except for Craig Charles. <laughs> God, Robert Llewellyn. Does so well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, simple stuff, simple effects. Yeah, it's <laughs> just Lister clutching his chest, <laughs> looking genuinely a bit sweaty. Oh god, it's shaking up my his big old rat tail. Yeah. I love it. Would you like to grip a paddle, sir? <laughs> What is that stuff on the table? That's not, that's not curry. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's meant to be it's curry. Definitely yeah, because there's like a curry. chili just sticking out of it. But that's an apple. 
It's an apple core. Why is there an apple core in the... Oh, I'm not even going to ask. Because Lister's horrifying. He's pretty terrifying. And this is the year Holly had the ridiculously long bangs. Yes. Which must have been a nightmare to work with, because I imagine Hattie Hadrish is probably having to sort of lean her head forward a little bit to do that. Also, they're giving her that digital glaze yeah. for this one as well. Hattie Hadrish's digital glaze. <laughs> I'm always a bit miffed that she hasn't come back to the show in any yeah. way. Yeah. Not, not for like, not that she doesn't want to, apparently. She's, she's more than happy to do it. Because um, Norman Lovett sort of complained that he was left behind, and that's why they brought him back for Series 8. Yeah. Uh, which made sense because Red Dwarf had been reset to sort of how it was but better uh, at the start from the start of the story. But and then he also cameoed in the most recent series as well. Yeah. One of the realities Rimmer skirts through, like Red Dwarf is still there and everyone's still alive. The Mac McDonald cameoed as well. It was like, oh my god, there's Captain Master. Um Gotta love Mac McDonald. Looking noticeably Older and a little bit thinner than he used to, so it was like, this is confusing. That's Matt McDonald for you. Hey, you want to be confused? Go see Batman 89 and spot Matt McDonald in that. Where is he in Batman 89? He's one of the thugs. He's one of the Joker's thugs. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I always get weirded out when I see him in Aliens. Yeah. Exactly. Which is, I think, is that the director's cut? It's only in the special edition. Special that's, edition, yeah. That's one of the scenes that they got wrong in the River of Pain novelization. Oh, God. Because his character is a major character in that novelization, obviously, because it's, it's pre yeah. the year. It's leading to the break, the outbreak. I remember watching that for the first time, being like, "What I, the hell?" He did return for the audio drama <laughs> version that the Dirk Max did as well. <laughs> did it? Yeah. Oh, good. To play the part yeah. that is that is yeah. then inaccurately written, but it's still the same part. So they, that... they tweaked the audio drama from where. Ah. Like, it, it wasn't like a full cast audio; it was a, like a straight up audio drama adaptation. Do you know With, what? Um, David Hare in the lead, actually. My favorite Red Dwarf thing ever, funnily enough, is the audio books. Of the novels. I used to have the uh, Infinity Welcomes Careful Drivers, <clears throat> better than life ones. Yeah, those are the ones. Infinity, Wel- Infinity Welcomes Careful Drivers is one of my favourite things I have ever listened to. Mostly because Chris Barry reads them. And Chris Barry, of course, is excellent at mimicking his fellow cast members to a T. But also he's just a really good reader. And and I think that's where Doug, uh, Doug and Rob... <laughs> I think that's where Doug and Rob shone. All right. In... What, which old movie is this stock footage from? I was gonna say, like that is you, some you never see him again, and it's, and it's naff quality. Ah, um, uh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the first appearance of Hitler in any big damn content. Is it? Probably. I can't remember. I was bringing him up before. It's a really, <laughs> it's, it's a really good makeup it's and a, costume it's, job. It's, it's a really good Hitler. <laughs> Is there such a thing as a? <laughs> <laughs> I love the subtitles. Just... We got the subs on. Subtitle was arrest Zem. Arrest oh, Zem. <laughs> you haven't got an earbud in. Oh yeah, no, you have. Full on there. <laughs> 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 see, whenever I see this scene, I just think of the Smegups compilation. <laughs> Because it's one of the outtakes where he knocks on the wall and it sounds like wood. <laughs> We're going to fix it in the dub. <laughs> Herman Gehring is somebody that um, Rob and Doug bring up a lot throughout all of Red Dwarf. The, the historical character who is referenced the most is Herman Gehring throughout the entirety of the show. It's really strange. Hey, I'm always in favour of ridiculing Nazis. Oh, absolutely. But it's it's this... I think it's this. I think it's just the the base level humour of the cross-dressing stuff is, is enough yeah. that they're like, ha ah, ha ha isn't that funny? Yeah, and that ne- doesn't necessarily age well, but that's from an old kaiju movie. What old kaiju movie is that from? Also, the fence from everyone's primary school in yeah. the background. <laughs> Everyone's probably got that kind of fence. This just looks like they could have filmed it around the corner from here. Probably did. They didn't. Probably did. Oh god, here he is. <laughs> my favorite. This is my favorite. Every, everyone is great in this, but this is my favorite guest performance in it. Is Elvis, and it's the best moment of the episode for my money. Is this? By the way, just a simple joke. Well, that was a fucking weird transition. I like that. <laughs> and also the, the the drums as well. <laughs> Uh, don't you want 
Danny John Jules the only man alive to pull off those outfits and make them look oh, really good. Oh, he's just stylish as fuck, that man. No matter what he's wearing. I think out of out of all of them, even Crichton, with Robert underneath, layers of latex, out of all of them, Danny's the only one who looks like no time has passed no. when you watch the Dave no. era of the show. Oh, gosh. Could be still 1986 as far as he's concerned. <laughs> Probably still is. Around the recording of this, we're only a couple of days away from the announcement they made. Did you hear about the announcement? Yeah, the, 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 the feature-length uh, TV film. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. It's yeah. special. Which must mean that Dave is willing to continue to make some, but maybe doesn't Not have the cash series, to shell out yeah. a full series or two. Um, but yeah, it's going to be out pretty soon, because they're filming it in December of 2019. Uh, the, the studio stuff. <laughs> New CD. <laughs> Look, if it's gallows, <laughs> say it's gallows. I can take it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just... The thing I love about Red Wolf is how it's just... It, 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 a lot of these gags you could take about... They, they could be any, in anything. Yeah. Like, so little of the gags depend... Okay, no. So few of the gags depend on the sci-fi and so little of the sci-fi depends on the gags. Yeah. So they can both work independently to the best of their abilities. Yeah. And then when they do bring them together and over and intersect them, it's uh, it's smart stuff. It works really well. My favourite run of it is still... Uh, no, this isn't to say I dislike anything after it, but my favourite run of it is still series one and two because it's so much wordplay. Yeah. A really clever sci-fi idea at the centre... And then it's just really funny comedy and wordplay. And occasionally they cross over. But it's the character stuff that makes it work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is perfect. This combination with these two in this situation is perfect for this. And this is such a great reveal. So they figured out, for those who are only half listening because of us. <laughs> Burning Woody the Pooh at the stake is fucking great. <laughs> He's refusing the blind. That's, right. That's the best one. Oh god! Ah, they just killed Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> That's something that no one should ever have to see, <laughs> and no one did. That's the beauty of it. Daniel Day Lewis. Now, Daniel Day Lewis apparently got the voice right. According, well, according to the very few recordings that were ever made of him, like, because there's no sound recordings, but it's like when people described him, he had a whiny, throaty voice. Oh, him sounding like this was more accurate. Yeah, everyone sounded like that in all wax cylinder but recordings. Would, but would Daniel Day Lewis play a waxwork replica of the no, rambling kid for, for Red Dwarf. He's too fucking serious for his own good. <laughs> He'd have to live as a waxwork for several months before and yeah. get, to the, get to the feel of it. <laughs> the Stan Laurel in this scene is great as well. I love this as well, just, just dropping the sci-fi concept yeah. in there and then moving on like it's totally normal. Wax droids. Just like strides. And now they're running amok. It's just... <laughs> but where's Harden? <laughs> well, I love the insinuation of it just being Stan Laurel. Yeah. It's like, oh God, they got Ollie. <laughs> oh no. Oh <laughs> <laughs> it's just that wonderful idea of like you know th 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 these non-warrior types apparently having fought battles <laughs> freaking Winnie the Pooh just Winnie the Pooh he, how did he get captured was he was he captured beating them off like to death he was an undercover operative <laughs> he didn't want to leave Piglet behind <laughs> For those who heard that, that was the dog puking. Probably because River's trying to be brave. Uh oh. I love it. <laughs> I remember it's my favourite now. 
was just Rimmer being so fucking serious, but completely fucking useless. With the widest nostrils in all of the military history. <laughs> no re- one, no one could do Pompous quite like Chris Barry. I really like the Series 4 prosthetic for Crichton as well. I think it's a great mask. It's just it's that wonderful mix of being kind of slim and angular, but still looks like you could poke his head and it just dip in with slangular. Madam. You had to go there. You had to go there. Slangular. Come on, Min. Ever since. <laughs> <laughs> what's with the, the gurning ah right Tony Hawk not that one yeah this one <laughs> <laughs> in his there's nothing quite as funny as a little simple slap gag this is his third role in the show because he, he was one voice of Talkie Toaster I think because the other one was uh, the guy who played Crichton in Crichton is it David Ross yeah, yeah. He he he's the, he's the main voice of Talkie Toast. So he's the one who came back to voice him in the Dave stuff. As oh well. yeah, okay, okay. Uh, would you like some toast? That's him. But I'm pretty sure Tony Hawk voiced either the Talkie Toast or one of the other devices for Ben. Makes sense. He's also the guy that like Metro D in Better Than Life. Yes. <laughs> Remove his trousers. <laughs> <laughs> but what's great about this story as well is it's. It, some of the best sci-fi ones that they do is where they just end up somewhere. It's, it's Doctor Who. Unleashed <laughs> around. See, I just it's just the imp- just all you need to do is set it up. You don't even need to give it a push to just set up the silly situation and the Joe writes itself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where does the slapping thing come from? Brilliant. <laughs> Simple. So confused. Simple <laughs> gag, really works. <laughs> I, like, I love, I love watching all studio shot stuff like this because it, it, so much of it is theatre, yeah, like straight theatre, but with the TV special effects um, stuck in. Moments of war games. <laughs> just, just <laughs> so... I also feel like the subtitles may have been written from the original scripts because all of these lines, every now and again, all of these lines is slightly different from how it's spoken. Oh, yeah. Only yeah. slightly different. Yeah. I think it's more a case of <clears throat> making sure everything fits, but I don't know anything about captions, so. Uh, it, it depends. The original scripts are usually provided where where they can be uh, for reference, but it depends on if whoever's inputting them is asked enough to actually listen to the tapes. <laughs> Love it. Don't eyeball me, Gandhi. <laughs> 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 that he's in army boots as well like they've all made a slight effort to look military love it just the fucking <laughs> seeing Chris Barrett do the fucking full metal jacket <laughs> no talent sir delighted to meet you dear boy <laughs> shut up who <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an uncertain cosmos. <laughs> it's just the fact that, as well, he's decided that this is how he needs to be. <laughs> just shit on all of them. <laughs> this all come from like his his background as well. It's all within character. Yeah. This is what you know. This, all of his all of his brothers like became admirals and sergeants and all this. And his dad's got military background. 
Runner's just an utter it's, failure. <laughs> like it's it's a combination it's a combination of his own power fantasies and trying to live up to the parents that he'll never see again, but he still feels like he has to impress them. It's just so wonderfully put together. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I'm just full fucking doubt now. I love it. It's like crimes, like you know. Please stop doing please this. Me. But it, he has gonna... to. He has to listen. Like Rimmer's technically his owner, so. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Almost the exact worst strategy. <laughs> Elvis is milking every moment mm. he can. <laughs> oh, look, if this was made today. But this race would be on the other side. Yeah. Whoa. 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 <laughs> Lefty wishy washy liberals, that's us! <laughs> he is psychotic at this point. <laughs> mm. Oh. Although a lot of Lister's morality yeah. does tend to start with just wanting to piss Rimmer off. Yeah. But as the show goes on, like Lister does noticeably evolve as a character over yeah. the course of the show. That's why it's such a good show. <clears throat> like everyone else kind of stays in an archetype and in a, in, a, in, a, in a form, but Lister does sort of. He goes from being like, you know, the, the curry loving slob who, who mm. just kicking around and bumming around space to that not being who he is. That's just being something that he does when he kind of like has a quiet moment. Like he regresses that just when he's, you know, not in the mood or needs to reset. Like he, he evolves, he matures. Not entirely, because part of the reason why we love him is he's a bit of a dick. But, you know. I mean, all you got to do is look at Back to Earth. I think that's Craig Charles' best performance in the role. Yeah. He's really good in it. <laughs> Title for Star Laurel Squeaks. Stand squeak. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is proper Python. This yeah, it's brilliant. It's, it's it's like it's like something out of uh, me of life. <laughs> yeah. ah! Oh, a bit of aliens. Shot. Oh, shot. <laughs> bit of aliens with the milky blood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Watch the Sneaky Queen Victoria attack. <laughs> Oh, oh nice. Oh lovely. Milky milky fun. <laughs> Pawn <Pond> sacrifice. <laughs> I love it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I love it.
because you can just feel it. Yeah, you can just feel it. Yeah, it's. Oh yeah, this is why it's my favourite episode. Suddenly, yes. Hey! <laughs> there we go. And the Elvis credits. <laughs> More or less. That's what it was. It's the fucking... It is that sense of like, you take this really silly sci-fi show and then you give it a properly, you know, to the point anti-war message and give its fucking... Um, give one of the main characters a real skewering. Mm. But then you put jokes on either side of it so it doesn't feel like you're preaching. But it's actually a really... It's a really... It's a really, uh, it's really well packaged. Message. Yeah, and fucking Craig Charles sells it. He sells that moment. Like he always fucking does. That's why the show's so great. I think Red Dwarf is always at its finest when it's kind of bleak. It is a, such a yeah. bleak show. Yeah. It is an incredibly bleak show. The idea that there's three million years in the future and humanity has not survived... And it's going to take them God knows how long to get back to yeah. Earth. And even if they do manage it, there's no guarantee there's even going to be people it's just, on Earth there. No. There's no guarantee they're ever going to meet intelligent life that isn't hostile or manufactured or, or, or well, remotely yeah. humanoid ever. It's not even... Uh, they, made, they made a point as well, didn't they? They never do it. They'll never do aliens in the show. No, they're always... But then they, skew, they skewered it slightly by introducing genetically engineered life forms. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. everything, every every creature you see on the show is a derivative of human life. <clears throat> yeah, and um, there's time travels. So we do encounter obviously other people, things yeah. like wax droids. For those who aren't familiar with the show and just joined us for this, wow, you leapt into the deep end. Yeah, um, but it's a sitcom, so I imagine you probably still just picked it up and enjoyed I think it. All it's all on same. Netflix as well. At least the first six seasons. Are, uh, I think. The first eight. First eight. First eight. Everything up. Everything up to the end of the BBC run is available on Netflix. Um, and if you have UK TV plays app. Um, on and off quite often um, all of it from the start of the BBC run to like the most recent season 12 or uh, was it 13 I think about 13. 12, I think. 12. Uh, all of it appears on there from time to time and that's completely free the UK TV play app is completely free it's so I do recommend getting hold of that if you like s- likes you some old school comedy and some more recent comedy that's Don't you know, Forget Repeats on Dave and UK Gold you know what you should try and get hold of <laughs> Hi, Hadridge. <laughs> Just sit here for every single commentary. The American pilot. Oh, that's a sacred item of, of, of absolute disgust. Just try and get hold of it. Let's seek it out. Do you know where the American pilot for Red Dwarf is? If you know when to get hold of it, of a decent quality. It's got to be on the internet somewhere. Let us know. Everything is. Everything is. There's the two, somewhere. wasn't there? They, they tried it once, and then they did another one, which was like the one that's filmed and passed around. Yeah. Um... With Hinton Batil as cat in one version of it. I mean, that's not. Which is, I mean, just. I don't hate that. I don't hate that, especially when you look at him in Buffy. Once more, we're feeling. Yeah. You remove the prosthetics. Yeah. He's basically already wearing a you suit. Want, like yeah. Like John you want it, You want someone for cat in the stage? You get a song and dance, man. Yeah. And they did that weird thing as well of, of an Americans remake British sitcoms. They always take one of the British stars over to it. Yeah. Because they took Robert Llewellyn. Yeah. To reprise Crichton for the show. Because um, Crying was there from the beginning as opposed to coming in later on. Yeah. In fact, the entirety of the first episode, of the pilot episode, is set on Red Dwarf way beyond everything like, going wrong, yeah. from what I know. Um, whereas, obviously, in the real show, that's the first 15 minutes of the episode, and the final sort of seven minutes is the setup of the premise for the show. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. there is a Kachansky in the American one, isn't there? I believe so, yes. Uh, one version, of, I think it was the first version of the pilot that put together, the cat was female as well. 
Oh, they, okay. They're trying, they trying to shake up the cast a bit. Yeah, I could dig um, that. I can dig that, but I, I also like the fact that, like, Lister, a very kind of boyish, um, uh, set in his ways, heterosexual male, yeah. is lumbered in with, like, no option to ever get his end away ever again. I think it's quite, yeah, a, it's quite yeah. a fun part of the bleak premise, is it's like, oh, dude. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Because it does... You're never going to get to put you something in something else that's human and it be a shared moment between two consenting people. It does come up now and again. Yeah, yeah. So to speak. <laughs> um, River, 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 arguably, is the more kind of hung up on the fact that he'll never have sexual interaction again, but... That's River. He's never really had sexual, sexual interaction. interaction. Although he gets his rocks off the most over the course of the show. <laughs> yeah, I can believe that. In, uh, in Hollow Ship and, yeah, and stuff like that. Oh, it's like, quite bloody good. hell. I like Hollow Ship. <laughs> Oh yeah, now I remember why I like Meltdown so much. <laughs> it's just good. What's your favourite episode of Red Dwarf, folks? Let us know. Send us a message or a tweet at Big Dumb Cast. You know the drill. Uh, and keep an eye out, those who are watching this on Patreon, three months for everybody else, because you will be able to vote very soon for what we watch next in a poll. Till then, do you want to salute them out? Oh, you heard it hit and everything. <laughs>